since you guys requested that i just cannot simply say no so let's do some av version in this video for beginners all right so let's start with my environment and i have to clarify a lot of things in that video so the first thing could be that i'm testing or can be developing payloads in the command vm machine i have my cavi box i have my pf sense doing a firewall job and then i have the client where i'm going to be testing the payloads we run in that video i'm going to be dedicated into evading av using powershell and amz so here i have only windows defender being turned on so that's the machine and the environment we're going to be testing now one key feature to mention is that during development during malware development and during engagements av or vdr evasion can happen on many different places there are some some times where you can bypass AMZ and then run your PowerShell Covenant Beacon. Uh, then there are a lot of cases where you need to perform some C, C++ dropover or maybe NIM. And in different scenarios, you need to perform different things. So in that video, we're going to dive into AMZ, PowerShell, and let's see how that works. In a show, AMZ is a mechanism that allows the antivirus to scan all the commands you pass to PowerShell. In order for us to test that, we can simply try to print out the AMZ util string. So if I do AMZ utils, you can see that this script contains malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus software. As soon as you see this message, that means AMZ is being triggered and it successfully blocked the command you was trying to run. So I'll discuss in a little bit of more details how that works and how we can bypass that reference i'm gonna be using that site where you can find it in the description of that video so we can see this graph which explains how amz works in a nutshell what it does is we have the powershell process which tries to run command and the amz dll is hooked into the powershell process itself meaning that whenever you run command it's being passed to amz scan string and amz scan buffer which are functions from that amz that dll and after they are being passed, they are being redirected to AV where they are scanned and signatured or flagged as it counts in itself as malicious. That's the process in a nutshell. And if all of the functions return or one of the functions return a value that says this is malicious, we see that usual the script contains malicious content, message, and so on. Now, just by looking at the diagram, of course, we can think of some methods of bypassing that, for instance, evading, calling these functions, overwriting the result of these functions, having a payload which is not signature by these functions, and so on. So, let's take a look at other two super interesting websites. The first one is a GitHub, which is on Security Sheets repository, and it's all about AMZ bypass. So, here we have 19 different methods of patching or bypassing AMZ. So you can see what they are exactly doing. QZ hardware breakpoints, CLR hooking, scanning the whole interception provider function patching, patching AMZ scan buffer, patching AMZ open session, and so on. So this repo is having 19 known techniques of bypassing AMZ. Of course, during engagement, you can try every single one of them, see which one of them works, which one of them do not. And there is also another cool website, which I can show you, called uh, amz.fail, which generates automatically AMZ bypass obfuscated payload. So some of the payloads are inside of this repository, but when you generate it from here, it's just easier and they are obfuscated. So if I just do generate, we can see we have unknown for server. So that's supposed to bypass AMZ. Then we have another one. Then we have another one, another one, and so on. One of the best and the best performing one, the best performing one I know so far from my experience, is the one from Rasta Mouse patching the AMZ scan buffer. That's the one we're gonna work with that MZ bypass payload. But before that, let's just generate a nice little PowerShell and give it a try. All right. So to generate a reverse shell, I decided to stick with PowerShell for this episode. As I mentioned, there are many more techniques, and I just can't cover them in that video. But trust me, we're gonna do a lot more. So in that case, I'm going to do MSF Venom, I'm specify the payload Windows X64 Shell Reverse TCP, which means Reverse TCP stages payloads. For those who don't know, stages means the whole payload is inside one file or one byte array or anything, and you just use that. 
where staged is where actually you've sent the client a small bunch of data and that payload or array or something is supposed to call you back so we need to transfer the other size of the array if you need to read more i'm gonna place the link into the description of the official stage versus stage this book from uh, offensive security so you can learn more there for now just imagine that this is stageless meaning that the whole payload is gonna be in that file so we don't have to worry about anything else that means we don't we're gonna generate a little less network requests which in some cases is better in some cases is not Right output file I'm gonna specify to be shell.md and keep in mind that I specified the output format to be PSH, meaning PowerShell. Now what that's gonna do is it is gonna generate a whole PowerShell script which can be executed and then we can achieve reverse shell. To test that I'm gonna set up a quick listener on port 9443 because the port should be the same as this one and on the same time I'm gonna host that on my Python HTTP server I'm gonna open a command VM machine because here I don't have antivirus and it's just easy for testing. And I can do IEX, new object, net.webquant, download string, and specify my IP slash shell.md. After I run that, we can see we have a, some kind of a number and that number represents a process ID. So if I open Process Hacker, which is software allowing us to debug different processes and see what they are doing, and trying to find the exact process number, which is meaning 3608. So uh, I'm gonna filter the PID like that. And 36, where is that? I can't find that. So most likely I started a sacrificial process with that PID, so I cannot find it there. Or this number can be anything else. I'm not really sure. But what I am sure is that if I hop back on my Cavi machine, I have a shell. So here I can run a bunch of commands. I can do whatever I want. And imagine that uh, I can simply switch that to not be just a reverse shell, but to be any C2 beacon like Covenant. And that supports PowerShell. What that does in a nutshell, so of course the whole thing is obfuscated, but what it does in a nutshell is it defines Windows APIs which are virtual awoc and create thread, so that most likely can be the thread ID that's been created. Then we define the byte array, meaning the shell code inside uh, one massive array, and then we execute that via virtual awoc and then copy that to memory and then we create a thread. Now, having that code is, as I said, harder to read because it's actually obfuscated one. But for beginners, you don't really have to worry that much about that since MSA Venom can generate that for you. Now, let's see what's going to happen if I actually want to run that on my client machine. So on the client machine, I can do the same IAX stuff. So a new object, net to a client, paste the IP, run that, and boom, we have the AMZ kicking in. Now we may ask, alright, so we can just use the payload and bypass that, so let's try that. Let's just open up the, the edge, copy the AMZ bypass payload, then paste it inside the console, and it's blocked again. So the AMZ payloads are also flagged and signatured, so we have to do something about it. And especially for that case, and especially for Defender Antivirus, there is a special scenario where this AMZ bypass, bypass can be easily patched. How that works is if I open Notepad and paste the AMZ payload inside, you can see that, since the code is again obfuscated, we can see a different piece of bytes. These bytes are actually used for the patch itself, so the bytes you see here are actually overwritten inside the memory. So they are, that's how the patch actually means, we patch memory bytes. And there is a known bypass for Windows Defender because Windows Defender works for a specific sequence of that specific bytes. So it works for that, and after that it works for that, and so on and so on and so on. And known bypass would be to just do that. So I can place that here, then I can just place that there, and that should be it. So I'm gonna copy the whole payload again. I'm gonna start a new power session because it already has some metadata and the environmental variables have been saved. So I'm going to open a new session, paste my payload, run that, and voila! We don't have MZ pop-up now. So let's see what's going to happen if I just do the IEX stuff. So let me get make sure that I have my listener up and ready to go. So NCMVOP, then go there, run that, and boom! Now we don't have that annoying error message 
but we have the number most likely the threat number that was being created if i go back we can see that i have successfully achieved the reverse shell and if i go back to here you can actually see that defender is turned on so that's one of the bypassing techniques which can be applied into the wild now keep in mind that during the engagement you don't really stop after you get the reverse shell from here you can perform lateral movement or pre-reach escalation so you're gonna need tools for that and these these two should be compliant and should be able to go go below the defender so he cannot see them one way of doing that is to obfuscate another way is to inject them into the memory with powershell but that's a topic for a whole new video with that being said i hope that video was insightful to you it was short but i believe it has some value so thank you everyone for watching subscribe to the channel that helps me a lot and if you have any further appreciation you can become my patreon appreciate your time watching my videos if you have any ideas make sure to drop them in the comments or make feel free to join my discord server where we share knowledge and experience see ya